12, not that I have, this is Paul talking, uh, not that I've already obtained all of this or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on. So be nothing, I press on. I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Verse 13 of the same chapter, Paul says, Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. For one thing I do, forget what is behind. So be nothing, forget what is behind. Forget what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. Straining toward what is ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. You know, the Bible tells us that we're to fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Faith looks forward. To me, it's to be faith looks forward. Faith doesn't look backward. If you look backward, you could become like Lot's wife, turn to a pillar of salt. Now, I, I think it's not a bad thing to do a little evaluation every once in a while. Every year we evaluate our uh, successes and our failures of the past year. You know, I think occasionally you can do an evaluation. That can help you to look at the areas that you need to improve. But, but listen, we, we've got to be a people of faith. We've got to be a people who look to the future. And I tell you what, I'm looking at the future here tonight, and it looks pretty good. You, tell your neighbor, you're looking good this tonight. Come on, tell your neighbor, you're looking good. I'm looking at the future right now, and it looks good. Amen. It looks good tonight, I tell you. We've got to be a people who believe God for breakthroughs. And of course, life is full of difficulties. Life is full of challenges. Life is full of problems. Sometimes we fail. Sometimes we succeed. But, but listen, if we want to move forward, we've got to learn to, to take our eyes off of our failures, off of our weaknesses, off of, the, uh, off of our mistakes. We can't, you cannot live a life of regrets. Hello. Don't live a life of regrets. Don't live a life na ay kung sana kung ginawa ko to sana get ito nangyari sana hindi ko ginawa yan sana you can't live a life like that. Amen. If we've made mistakes this past year, ask the Lord's forgiveness. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. Ask his forgiveness. If you need to reconcile with other people, good idea to do that as well. Ask people's forgiveness. Get your heart right, get your heart clean and then just believe God that you're living with a clean slate and you have a fresh start and a new beginning. Amen, Baba. I believe God gives us a new year for a new beginning. I'm excited every time a new year comes around. Uh, you know, th this is probably not really spiritual, but, but uh, boy, I look forward to the new year more than I do Christmas. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Pastor Rich, I do. I look forward to the new year because for me, it's a fresh start. It's a new beginning. I can, I can put the failures of the past behind me. I can believe God for greater breakthrough in the coming year. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a clap for that. Amen. You too. That's for you. Let's believe God for something tremendous in 2020. But in order to believe God for something tremendous in 2020, you've got to put the past behind you. You can't carry the past into 2020. I'm going to read one more uh, passage, and then we're going to have our communion, and then we'll have uh, uh, really the message tonight is, is fasting for the future. But just before we uh, jump into communion, Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 18, forget the former things, do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. You know, God is always doing something new. He is always doing something new. And I want to challenge you here tonight. If we are doing the same old, same old year after year, we may be left behind because God is always doing something new. God is always doing something fresh, something new. If we just live our lives, yung paulit ulit, same old, same old, it's no wonder that we're not advancing. We've got to believe God for something new, something fresh. I love what uh, Pastor Al shared, it, uh, shared with us one time at one of, the, uh, one of the summits there in Thailand. He made us some t-shirts. It said, if you don't know what to do, do something new. <laughs> Amen. If you don't know what to do, try something new. Amen, Baba. I want to challenge you this year. Try something new. Do something you've never done before. Believe God for something that you have never tried before. Don't live a mediocre life of same old, same old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. God is constantly doing something new. Can you say amen? 
Uh, I tell you what, you can get into a dead religion, a dead orthodox religion. Of course, of course, we have the foundation of Scripture. Of course, we have doctrinal foundations. Those are the rails that, that keep us going in the right direction. But I tell you, God is doing something new, lagi. There's no, no new revelations as far as the truth of Scripture. You know, God is just revealing the things that are already in Scripture. So there's no new revelations that way. But the methods are always changing. He's always doing something all throughout history. God is not a boring God. If you are bored, then you don't know God. There's nothing boring about God. He's always doing something new. And so we need to believe God for this 2020. God, t tell your neighbor, I'm going to do something new this year. Come on, tell your neighbor, I'm going to do something new. Something I've never done before. Something you've never done before. Let's believe God. This year is going to be a tremendous year. I believe that. You know, I think, you know, maybe the first quarter we're just kind of ease into, the, ease into the new year, but I believe by the middle of the year we're going to see some things take off. I really believe that. I really believe that. So we've got, to, we, we've got to believe God for greater things, and we don't want to ever get stagnant. We don't want to ever get comfortable. Uh, we, want to, we want to keep pushing the boundaries and keep believing God for new things. All right. So at this time, we're going to have our, uh, take up our communion, or, or we're going to uh, not take up our communion. We're going to, we're going to serve communion. And uh, so I'd like us to do this. Let's do something a little bit, something different. Can we all stand a moment? Let's stand together. And... Uh, I want you to think about this past year. We're going to bow our heads in a word of prayer here in just a moment. But, but I want you to think about this past year. And again, it's not bad to evaluate. Everybody say evaluate. evaluate. If, if you don't evaluate, you don't know what needs to change. But you don't want to live a life of introspection. You don't want to live a life where you're, you know, every moment, every day evaluating everything. That, that will cripple you. It will rob you of any strength, of any energy. So, so on occasion, you need, we need to evaluate, look over the past, look over the mistakes that we may have made, even our successes, and then we're going we're gonna to pray together, and we're going to just put that all into the blood of Jesus. We're going to forget the past, whether they're failures or successes. We're going to put those things behind us, and we're going to believe God for something great in 2020. Is that all right? All right, so let's just go ahead and bow our heads in a word of prayer tonight. And I just want you to talk to the Lord, just you and God. Just begin to talk to Him right now. And just whatever mistakes you've made this past year, come on, every single one of us, we've failed in various areas of our life. Maybe it's in your family. Maybe it's in your finances. Maybe it's your own personal life. Maybe your devotions were really lousy this past 2019. Uh, perhaps uh, God spoke to you to do some certain things and you didn't do them. Uh, just ask His forgiveness right now and let's just trust and believe. God is merciful. He's merciful, kind, loving, forgiving, more than willing to cleanse our hearts, to give us a fresh start and a new beginning. Today is a day of new beginnings. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we humbly bow our hearts tonight, O oh God, and we acknowledge, Lord, that we have failed you in so many ways. Lord, God, we have failed you in various areas of our life, but we thank you for your blood, oh God, and we know that we're not perfect, but we're not going to make that as an excuse, oh God. We're going to look forward to, to Christ, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. We're going to fix our eyes on Jesus. Lord, we look to the cross tonight. We look to the blood of Jesus. Lord, we look to the cleansing power of the blood that, that never dies, the blood that is always speaking a better thing than the blood of Abel. God, we thank you for your blood. We thank you, God, for your forgiveness. We thank you, God, for your promise. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, that if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us our sins, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So tonight, God, we just lay it all down at your feet. Every failure, every success, every attitude, every bad thought, bad word, in every area of our life, oh God, we lay it at your feet, Lord Jesus. Every time that we moved in the flesh and tried to do things in our own strength, God, we just lay it at your feet tonight, Lord Jesus. And we say, here we are, God. We are broken, we are empty, we are weak, but you are strong. God, we, we are weak, God. We are, sometimes we feel defeated, but you make us victorious, oh God. Father, we thank you for the power of your blood. And so we pray tonight, God, cleanse every heart, 
cleanse every mind, oh God. Ano man ang mga bagay, Panginoon, na maaari mga bagay na pinood namin o pinaginggan namin, Panginoon, o sinabi namin, God, na hindi kalugudlod sa inyong uh, kalawatihan, oh God, Lord, we ask your forgiveness tonight, God. Cleanse our eyes, cleanse our ears, cleanse our hands, oh God. Cleanse our lips, Lord Jesus. Help us, oh God, to have a fresh start and a new beginning. God, this is a new day, a new beginning. We believe that this year is going to be better than last year, oh God. We believe, oh God, you're going to do something fresh and new in each and one of our hearts, oh God. We thank you for the spirit of faith and victory that's here tonight, God. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, amen. Uh, now, for uh, those of you who are not aware, our midweek services, we really do try to gear these more toward our leadership. I am so glad that so many of you have come out tonight to begin the year, right? So we want to see our leaders, of course, advance and, and, and be ahead. Uh, if you're going to lead, you need to be ahead, amen? So um, fasting for the future is something that I've recently become aware of. Uh, quite a number of our senior pastors and quite a number of our leaders have made a commitment to fast this January. Um, some of them for three days, some of them for 10 days, some, some of them for, uh, like several of them for 21 days. Uh, what, what I find interesting about this is that no one instructed them to do this. No one told them, let's all fast for January. Uh, but one by one, several of them are in, my, in, in some of my care groups. I, I have care groups with uh, some of our young, our young upcoming ministers and then with our pastors as well. They've shared with me privately that God has spoken to their heart to do a 21-day fast, to do a 14-day fast, a 7-day fast. I, I just found it really interesting that so many are fasting this January 2020 when there was no announcement, no instruction, no encouragement, just the Holy Spirit speaking to their hearts. Are you listening here tonight? So I believe there must be a reason for this. Huh? I believe that the Holy Spirit is speaking to many hearts in this whole area of fasting. So we're going to talk a little bit about fasting. Of course, there's no there's not going to be any obligation here. Nobody's going to twist your arm uh, to fast. I do want to study the Scriptures tonight and see why, why fast. What's the purpose of fasting? When I say fasting, we're talking about, you know, not eating any food uh, for, for a certain period of time. Maybe it's for a day. Maybe it's for three days. Some people do seven days. Some people do 14 days. Uh, some people do 21 days. A very, hand, a hand, very few people do 40 days. I do know some that have... Uh, even made a commitment in our organization who've tried to fast for, for 40 days. So I, I believe that, that, that God is speaking something and there is a reason. There is a reason. I really believe there is a reason. So in my short study of fasting in the Old and New Testament, I found that there are two primary reasons for fasting. There is quite a few verses in the Bible about fasting. I found that Two, two primary reasons, there's quite a few reasons, but, but the two that came up the most, uh, on, on many occasions, they would fast if they were in crisis. If there's a crisis, something uh, terrible is happening, then they would, you know, give themselves in the fast that the enemy's attacking, surrounded the city, then they would begin to fast in crisis, looking for an answer, looking for a breakthrough. The second thing that I saw, which was interesting to me, is that uh, many times in the Scripture, when they were fasting, they would fast for the future. They were fast for uh, what they fasting for direction that God give them some instruction. Now there's several other reasons they fast, but these two were primary that I saw repeatedly in the Bible. One is they were fasting when there's a time of crisis and they need a breakthrough. They need God to answer. And the second, they were, they were fasting when they were looking for direction, that God was going to do something new, something fresh. And they were looking for direction from the Lord, looking for confirmation of what they should do. So crisis and direction seem to be the two primary reasons that people fast in the Bible. In, in the Bible. Again, when I say fast, I'm talking about not eating any food. Uh, most of them go on water. There is, of course, the Daniel fast, where it's just fruits and vegetables. That's nothing wrong with that. Um, there are a couple of other times that they fasted. Of course, Moses fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. Uh, mainly, this was totally different. He, he went up because he wanted to have intimacy with God, right? I mean, his, his primary purpose there was to meet with God, and he received revelation from the Lord. So after spending 40 days Fasting, and I'm and certainly not encouraging anyone here tonight to suddenly fast 40 days, just a little, um, a, a little bit of uh, practical advice. 
You know, if you're going to go into a, a lengthy fast, I would really encourage you to try fasting a shorter fast first. Hello, gising batayo. So, you know, don't just jump into a 40-day fast, just not wise. Uh, try, try, see what you can do with three days, seven days, you know, maybe a couple of months later, try 21 days. Uh, there's a lot of things that you could do to prepare yourself to help you for a lengthy fast. So I, I'm sharing this to you tonight because I believe that God's going to speak to some of, some of your hearts tonight. Again, there's no obligation here. Nobody's going to check up on you or, or ask you, are you fasting? You know, no, no obligation here. But I do believe that, that there's something significant that takes place when God begins to move on the heart of the leader, leadership to do extended fast. It's for a reason. Again, because... This was not something that they were instructed to do. This was not something we talked about. This was just something that suddenly I'm hearing one after another. Several of our pastors are doing 21-day fast this, uh, this January. So I believe God is preparing us for something. Amen, Baba. I really believe that. I really believe that. <coughs> and so I want to read some passages of Scripture here. Of course, Moses, again, Moses fasted because he wanted to have an encounter with God. He received tremendous revelation from the Lord. Isaiah tells us that you can uh, to fast to bring to bring breakthrough from bondages in your life. So so here's a little tip: if there are if there are areas of your life, if there are addictions in your life, if you're addicted to pornography, maybe you're addicted to internet, maybe you're addicted to even food, or you know there's some kind of addiction in your life. There's a bondage in your life. Fasting can oftentimes bring breakthrough. Isaiah says in Isaiah 58 verse six. Is not this the kind of fasting that I have chosen? To loose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke. To set the oppressed free and to break every yoke. So there's something about fasting that can bring breakthrough, can bring deliverance. Even fasting for others. You know, perhaps you have a loved one who's addicted in some way. Uh, maybe an alcoholic or maybe a, a, a drug addict or something. There's some kind of addiction in their life. You know, it wouldn't be, a, wouldn't be a bad thing to spend a couple of days fasting and praying. There's something about fasting and praying that brings a greater release. Can you say amen? You know, remember Jesus, uh, the, the disciples were trying to cast out the demon. They couldn't cast it out. And, and then they asked the Lord, why, Lord, why couldn't we cast it out? And Jesus said, this one comes out only by fasting and prayer. So there are certain things in people's lives that breakthrough comes when there's only through fasting and prayer. So I want to encourage you in that area as well. Again, Isaiah 58. This is the chosen fast of the Lord to uh, untie the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressed free and break every yoke. Is, not, is it not to share your food with the hungry, to provide the poor whatever, uh, to provide the poor wanderer with shelter when you see them naked and to clothe them and to not turn away from your own flesh and blood? Then your light will break forth like the dawn. Your healing will quickly appear. You know, there's times to fast that will bring, li literally bring physical healing to your body. Again, I'm not saying to do this lagi or don't do it unadvisedly. But, but there are times when fasting will bring physical healing to your body. Your healing will quickly appear. Your righteousness will go before you. And the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Then you will call and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help and He will say, here I am. Amen. You will cry to Him and He will say, here I am. Something about fasting that can bring breakthrough. But going back to the two primary reasons for fasting. One is if there is a time of crisis. Some, it's a good idea to get on your face before God, begin to cry out to God, to fast and pray. If things are really, really in bad shape, whether it's in your marriage, with your kids, whatever it is, uh, fasting can bring the answer that ordinary prayers doesn't bring. The other is in the whole area of direction and receiving guidance from the Lord. So again, the title of the message is Fasting for the Future. I want you to open your Bibles with me to the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter 9, and we're going to look at Daniel having, who fasted on at least two occasions, he fasted 21 days. We're going to look at this a little bit and see how his fasting brought revelation of the future and direction for Daniel and the nation of Israel. Daniel chapter 9 and verse 2, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood from the scriptures, according to the word of the Lord given to Jeremiah the prophet, that the desolation of Jerusalem would last 70 years. And so I turned to the Lord God and pleaded with Him in prayer and petition 
in fasting and in sackcloth and ashes. So what you need to understand here is that Daniel was doing his regular, you know, his regular devotions to the Lord. He's praying regularly as he does. He opens the scriptures and he reads in the, in the writings of Jeremiah, the prophet Jeremiah, that, that Israel or uh, the, the, the Hebrew people were only to be in bondage for 70 years. So something on the inside of him says, my goodness, this time is coming to a close. God wants to do something. There's going to be a transition. Somebody say transition. transition. I'm going to focus in on transition tonight. Fasting when there is transition, when you're looking for direction, when God wants to do something new, something fresh in your life. And so here Daniel is. He's reading the Bible and reading the words of Jeremiah the prophet, and he gets this revelation from the Scriptures that God's time for the nation of Israel... Now, you have to remember, Daniel was in, he was in the Babylonian captivity. He was with the Babylonian king, and Israel had been dispersed. But the, the, their, time was a, their time of their oppression was about to be over, and there was going to be a transition, a transition back into the promised land. God was going to do something new, something fresh, similar to what God did with Moses and, and Joshua. You know, the, the Israelites, they spent 40 years there in the wilderness, and then a day comes, the day comes when Joshua, it's time for him to cross over the Jordan River and to transition into a new phase of their, their life and their ministry, the nation of Israel. Amen, Baba. So transition is a key time to consider fasting and praying. Daniel was fasting and praying. He knew that a transition was coming. Something was going to happen, and he wanted to prepare himself for that. He was praying both for the deliverance and for the future of Israel. Fasting for the future. That's why it's not a bad idea to begin in January to do a fast. So I want to encourage you again. Of course, no obligation. It's kanya kanyang conviction, kanya kanyang abilidad. But you know, I want to encourage you to consider. Maybe just think about fasting a day or two days or, uh, you know, whatever time you feel is the Lord puts on your heart. This January, as we've, we've stepped into a new year, it's a new beginning, it's a fresh start. We want to we be in line with all that God wants to accomplish in our life this year. Amen, Baba. So fasting is a good thing. It, it, fasting will open your heart, open your eyes, open your spiritual eyes, open your spiritual ears. It can oftentimes, this, the one thing that I've found with fasting, maybe more than anything else, it will really give you clarity. So being that in clarity. That's the thing that I've found has, has been the greatest benefit of fasting. It brings tremendous clarity to your heart and to your mind. You think clearer. You, 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 you perceive clearer. It causes all that... Uh, you know, you're putting down the flesh, you're putting down uh, the desires of the flesh, and it causes the, the spirit man to arise. You become, your thoughts become clear, your mind becomes clear. Fasting will bring clarity to your life. So if you're needing direction, you know, not every single direction, don't, don't fast and pray what, what color of dress you're going to buy next week, right? <laughs> you know, but, but if, you're, if there's significant, significant change, significant decision, that you need to make in life wouldn't be a bad idea to do a little fasting. Amen? To ask the Lord, to, to, to quiet yourself before the Lord and be able to hear clearly what is the Spirit of God saying? What is your direction for my life, Lord? I strongly encourage this. So this is what Daniel was doing. He had seen uh, that the Lord was wanting to bring a transition. The Lord was wanting to bring a change. And so he began to fast. You can read from... Uh, you can read from Daniel chapter 9, verse 21, on down to the, to the end of the chapter. The angel comes to him. Daniel has now, he, he spent this 21 days in fasting because of what he read in the scriptures. He knew that something was happening. There was a transition about to happen. He gave himself to fasting and prayer. The angel of the Lord comes, and in verse 21 to the end of the chapter there in Daniel chapter 9, the angel of the Lord be, tells him the future, tells him thing, one thing after another of what God is going to do. And so the result, the result of Daniel's fasting is he gets a clear vision of the future. Are you here tonight? I said the result of his fasting is he gets a clear vision of the future. God brings the angel and begins to tell him what the future, fasting for the future. In Daniel chapter 10, 
he, it's a, another time, uh, sometime later, he does another 21-day fast. This one is a little bit different. But again, the angel of the Lord comes to him and begins for the next two or three chapters begins to unfold to him the future, begins to show him what God's plan and purpose, what God is going to do in and through the nation of Israel. So he is fasting and gaining revelation for the future. And so if you have some area that you need direction in your life, in fact, in Daniel chapter 10, verse 14, the angel comes to him and says, this is the second time that he's done a 21-day fast, fast, in Daniel chapter 9, he does 21 days. In Daniel chapter 10, he does another 21 days. The angel comes to him in Daniel chapter 10, verse 14, to explain to you what will happen in, to your people in the future, for the vision concerns a time yet to come. If you're needing direction, I would encourage you, consider. Now again, if it's if it's a minor thing, maybe not necessary to fast. But if it's a major decision in your life, wouldn't be a bad idea to do a little fasting and ask the Lord to give you clarity. Everybody say clarity. For, for me, the greatest benefit of fasting has been clarity. It gives my mind clarity, my heart clarity, puts down the flesh, and then you can hear from God. You can get a clear vision of what God wants to do in your life for the future. And so again, in Daniel chapter 10, the, whole, the next two chapters are all about the future of Israel. In the book of Acts, they also fasted before they sent out key leaders to expand God's kingdom. If you turn with me in your Bible to Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13, beginning in verse 1. Now in the church of Antioch, there were prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simon called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, uh, I can't pronounce half of these words, <laughs> and they've been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. Yeah, spelling was my worst subject in school. Really. <laughs> I did good at math, but spelling I never could get right. All right. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Lord said to them, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. So after they had fasted and prayed, they placed their hands on them and sent them off. So again, this is a significant commissioning of some key leaders. And the leaders of the early church said, you know what? We, we need to fast. We need to pray. We need to get this right. Amen? Th this is important. We don't want to just make a decision based on our own understanding. We want to get this right. And so they're fasting and they're praying and God speaks to them and says, all right, it's Barnabas and Paul. You're going to lay hands on them and send them out. And so they fast and pray and they send them out. And I believe, I mean, there's, there's no doubt because you look at what they accomplished in the book of Acts. They, they went out with the power and the anointing of God. Amen, Baba. Because the leaders had spent time fasting and praying before commissioning them. Uh, something similar takes place in the very next chapter. In Acts chapter 14, uh, the Bible tells us that uh, Paul and Barnabas, in verse 23, Paul and Barnabas appointed elders for them in each church, and with prayer and fasting, they committed them to the Lord in whom they had put their trust. In other words, even Paul and, Bar Paul and Barnabas were sent out with fasting and prayer from the leaders of that church. They went out, they were establishing churches. Before they put some leaders into the church, they fasted and prayed. Why? Well, why would they fast and pray before putting leaders? Because they didn't want to make a mistake. They wanted to make sure that they had the right people in the right position. Amen, Baba. They wanted to hear from God because the future of the church was dependent upon them making the right decisions. They're looking to God for direction. Even the Lord Jesus, even the Lord Jesus before He appointed those 12 disciples to become apostles, the Bible says He spent the whole night in prayer. I mean, the Lord Jesus, He could certainly, He could hear the voice of the Father at any time. But the Bible says before Jesus, I think that's in Luke chapter 6 if I'm not mistaken, or maybe it's in 12, I probably wrote it down here somewhere, in, in uh, Luke chapter 6 and verse 12, Jesus spends the whole night in prayer before appointing 12 apostles. Now, why would he do that? Because he recognized the future of the church, the future of world evangelism, 
dependent upon making the right choice. Amy Baba. And so if you have a major decision, uh, again, you know, not small decisions, I don't think you have to fast and pray over a small decision. But if you've got a major decision, there's going to be a major shift, a major transition in your life. It's probably a good idea to get along with God and get some clarity. Lalo, lalo, if you're confused, you're not sure. Is this the direction I should go? Is this the direction should I go? Should I start this business? Should I go abroad? Should I, you know, is this the person to marry? <laughs> not a bad idea to spend some time fasting and praying and listening to God. To get those feelings, to get all those uh, sarilimong, uh, sarilimong isip, sarilimong uh, pakiramdam, you know, ako oh, nadadama ko, siya na nga ang talaga ang para sa akin, you know, nadadama ko, ito talaga ang business. You gotta get those feelings and those ideas under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Can you say amen? So often, I tell you what, I heard this years ago and I just found it to be true. Probably 99% of the time, we make decisions based on feelings. It's just not a good way to make decisions. Hello. Oh, feel ko ito. And, 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 and so many Christians, they, they, they think that the feelings are the Holy Spirit. Hello? We can, of course, we can feel the Holy Spirit, but your feelings are not the Holy Spirit necessarily. Are you hearing me tonight? So, so we've got to make a, we've got to be careful that we're not making decisions just based on our feelings. Oh, I feel like this is the right job for me. I feel like this is the right person for me. I feel like this is the right business for me to start. You need to spend some time in the Word of God in prayer. Can you say amen? You need to be able to quiet those feelings, those, those, your own ideas, your own desires. You need to quiet those down and, and begin to really hear God's voice. A lot of, a lot of, if it's a major decision in your life. Amen? So again, it's a good idea to do a little fasting. Fasting helps us to do that. Fasting for our future is a wise thing to do especially if it's making major decisions. I, I tell you what, the future looks amazing here at VCA. Amen? <laughs> if, if tonight is any indication of the future, I am so encouraged. And, and I know that God is going to do some tremendous things. And w there, there's going to be some changes. There's going to be some transition. L let's believe God. Here's, here's another thing, another reason that you want to fast and pray. Uh, lalo, lalo, if you're making a major decision, uh, especially in this area of transition. If you are transitioning, whether it's you yourself transitioning or someone that close to you who's transit, if you're tra transition can either, either bring tremendous success, tremendous blessing. You just go, you know, if, if the transition is right, it has to be the right person, has to be the right time, has to be God's timing. Or say God's timing. It has to be the, done the right way. If, if, when, when you're transitioning, uh, for example, if you're the, uh, the head of a business or, or, or something like that, you're, you're transitioning. If you have the right person, the right time, the, the right way, then that transition can actually cause your, your business, your organization, whatever it is, can cause it to, to, suddenly, to suddenly go up. Amen? The other thing can happen too, right? <laughs> If you have the wrong person or the wrong timing or the wrong... You could even have the right person but the wrong timing. You could have the right person and do it the wrong way. And it could, enter, it could end up in utter disaster. So when it comes to transitioning, whether you're transitioning to go abroad, whether you're transitioning to, from uh, uh, one, one company to another or one business to another, boy, it's a good idea. It's just a good idea to quiet yourself before the Lord and ask God for, cl everybody say clarity. clarity. Again, I'll share this again. The one thing, the one benefit that I've got out of fasting more than any other is clarity. Clarity. Your mind gets clear. Your heart gets clear. You're able to get rid of your own ideas, get rid of your own feelings, and just hear from God. A and so whenever there's a transition, you want to probably do a little bit of fasting and ask the Lord to really open our spiritual eyes and open our spiritual ears. I, I do believe this. Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Plans not to harm you, but to prosper you, to give you a hope in the future. 
I believe 2020 is going to be an amazing year for many of us. Some of us had a, I don't know how many of you, uh, l- l- let, me, let me see a show of hands and please don't feel obligated. You know, s- some of us had a, uh, a terrible year in 2019. Some of us had an average, you know, just an average year in 2019. Some of you had an amazing year in 2019. So, so let me just see a show of hands and don't, don't, don't be embarrassed e- either way. How, how many of you had 2019 for you was really a rough year? C- can you, can, let me see your hands. Oh, there's quite a few. Wow. More than I expected. So we need to pray for you guys here in a moment. H- how many of you, 2019 for you was just kind of an ordinary year? H- how many of you? Come on. My hand is raised for that one. 2019 for me was a good year, but it wasn't anything spectacular. 2019 was just an okay year. H- how many for you, 2019 was an amazing year? You had an amazing, well, wow, that's a lot. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> that's good. All right. So 2020, what's 2020 going to be? If 2019 was, was, a, was a rough year for you, you need to exercise your faith and believe that this year, 2020, is a year of breakthrough. Amen? Yeah. Th- this is a year of breakthrough. It's a year of breakthrough. If 2019 was just an average year, why not believe God for above average this year? Amen? If 2019 was, was an amazing year for you, hey, it can even be more amazing. <laughs> it can be, it can, it can, God could blow you away this year. I, I sense there's a lot of people that's really going to break through this year, this 2020. I feel, I feel like financially, I'm going to be preaching a, I'm going to be preaching a message on this about uh, uh, positioning yourself for prosperity in 2020. I, I feel like financially, there's going to be significant breakthrough. Amen. Significant breakthrough. I really believe that for 2020, we're going to see some things happen. So, but we've got to keep our hearts right, you know, right? D- don't, don't get greedy. Don't get selfish. Don't get materialistic. Materialism will never satisfy your soul. Never. Never satisfy your soul. So, so don't make the mistake of thinking, you know, if I just have more money, I'll be more happy. That's baloney. Happiness is, doesn't, isn't, isn't dependent upon how much money you have. Happiness is a condition of your heart. So, so don't make that mistake. So I want us to pray. We're going we're gonna to pray here. Um, I want us to all stand together and... Uh, I think I'd like us to really, can, can we get into some small groups, just two, re- really small groups, two or three people. Here's what I want us to do. I want us to pray for one another into this year 2020. So pray for the person on your right, pray for the person on your left. Let's pray for significant breakthrough. And I, wa- I want you to pray strong prayers, prophetic prayers, victorious prayers. Make some declarations. So go ahead and find yourself a partner, two or three people, get together Uh, just two or three people get together begin to pray for one another this 2020 Father in the name of Jesus God we pray for significant breakthrough in the hearts and the lives of our brothers and our sisters God Lord we pray for breakthrough in our finances we pray for breakthrough in our marriages we pray for breakthrough in our own hearts oh God in our spiritual lives Lord we pray for significant breakthrough God in our workplace, in our businesses. Come on, let's hear some aggressive praying, some prophetic praying. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for salvation to come to our unsaved loved ones. This year, this year, 2020, God, let this be the year, God. Father, we pray for our businesses suddenly to take off. God, we pray for some suddenlies this 2020, Father. God, I pray for promotion, 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 promotion. Promotion, promotion, promotion. Promotion, promotion, promotion. God, I pray for significant promotion in the workplace. In Jesus' name. Promotion, promotion, promotion. Promotion, promotion, promotion. In Jesus' name. God, I pray you would exalt your people, oh God. Exalt your people, Father, in the name of Jesus. And may we give you the glory and give you the praise, oh God. May we be careful, oh God, to give you the honor. God, we pray for breakthrough in our church. We pray for breakthrough in our Bible studies. Breakthrough, God, the Bible studies in offices and homes and schools, oh God. We pray for salvation of the lost like never before. God, we pray for significant breakthrough in our church finances, oh God. Father, in the name of Jesus, even breakthrough in the area of healing, breakthrough in the prophetic, breakthrough, God. We ask in Jesus' mighty name, Jesus' mighty name.
God, we believe, we believe, we believe this year, God, this year, God, there will be significant advancement, God, significant advancement in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we pray for fresh release of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, oh God. We pray for fresh release of the prophetic, oh God. Fresh release of the giftings of the Holy Spirit, God, in the name of Jesus. God. Lord, we ask in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, let this year, God, be significant advancement, God, in every area of our life, Father, in the name of Jesus. In our personal lives, oh God, in our married lives, God, in our families, in our homes, in our businesses, God, in our workplace, God, let there be significant increase in the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. All right, let's give a big round of applause to the Lord tonight. Come on, Balabana, the Panginoon. 2020 is going to be an amazing year. Let's believe God. Now, listen. It's not automatic. It's not automatic. We've got to believe. We've got to step forward. We've got to break through in prayer. Maybe do a little fasting. Certainly we have to change some things. Amen? There has to be. If you don't change, nothing will change. We've got to change. I've got to change. All right, let's give the Lord a big hand.